the time you were watching a movie or a TV show, perhaps taking in a play or reading a book, which I'm doing now, <laughs> and you found yourself rooting for the villain, and what's worse, rooting against the victim. A few big names come to mind for me personally, all the Oceans movies, Now You See Me, High School Musical, all the classic <laughs> Wait, you don't believe me that High School Musical is an example? Well, you guys are in for a rude awakening, because let me tell you that Sharpay Evans is the actual victim of High School Musical. <laughs> and that's the case in all three movies, but let's start with the first one. We're introduced to Sharpay as a performer. She and her brother Ryan are superstar, talented performers who have starred in every one of the school's productions as the lead every single year. They're going up against Troy Bolton and Gabriela Montez, who have only one experience in performing, and that's a random karaoke performance. He plays basketball, she's smart, but they don't know how to perform. When it comes to the tryouts, you'd think that Sharpay and Ryan were a shoe in. And they show up, and I'm sure you all remember Kelsey, the composer. <laughs> she comes up with this really boring, but supposed to be beautiful, slow song called What I've Been Looking For. Sharpay and Ryan prove that they are as amazing as they are, and they spice it up, they speed up the tempo, they add choreography, and they perform like professionals. Kelsey was a little offended, but honestly they did her a favor. Troy and Gabrielle are nowhere to be found. Well, they run in, once Miss Darvis, the head of the drama department, decides that trials are over, they run in and say now they want to try out. She obviously tells them, I'm sorry, you're late. Somehow they sing and they end up getting a call back. I don't understand it, but that's just how it worked. So of course Sharpay finds out that Troy and Gabriella have a callback, and they have the potential to take her spot away from her. I might add, she has a rehearsal pianist. She clearly wants this role, and now it's going to be taken away by two amateurs who have no idea what they're doing. So she decides to teach them a lesson. Her lesson is, when you are involved in the drama department, when you are performing in the theater, it has to be your number one priority. So she changes the date of the callbacks. The same day as Troy's big basketball game, and Gabriella's scholastic decathlon, do not ask me what that means. She <laughs> solves a long math equation. There's something with chemicals no one understands. Smart people. Smart people stuff. She wants to teach them that you have to put theater first, not your other teams and clubs and whatever you're involved in. So let's cut to the callbacks. Sharpay and Ryan show up in these amazing extravagant costumes they have a full choreographed routine, Spanish lyrics, no clue where Kelsey came up with those. And then Troy and Gabrielle show up, late again. But they sing anyway, again. All their friends came and they're cheering them on. They also show up in outfits that represent that which they care about more. Troy's wearing a tracksuit. I might add it is a different tracksuit than the one that he wore to the game. So he went out this way to change it to another tracksuit to show up for the callback, clearly not caring enough to put on a costume. Gabriella wore a lab coat. <laughs> She's smart. She likes. <laughs> Gabriella gets ready to sing and nothing comes out. She's nervous. She has stage fright. Well, I hate to break it to you, Gabriella, but if you want Sharpay's role, you're going to have to sing in front of people. <laughs> Troy talks her out of it. They're able to sing. Everyone's cheering them on. Miss Darbus gives them the part. Why? Because the auditorium has never been so full. So Sharpay gets the backseat. Does she freak out? No. She actually congratulates Gabriella. And wishes her good luck, tells her break a leg. Gabrielle is such an amateur, she has no clue what break a leg even means. <laughs> Things don't get better for Sharpay in the second movie. <laughs> she wants to recover from the year. So she goes to her family's country club. She just wants to perform her talent show, relax. She's still crushing on Troy. So she gets him and his friends jobs at the country club. She also knows that Troy is extremely nervous about the future and about college. Shows, so, she sets up meetings at dinner with prominent people in the college that he wants to go to. She also gets him a promotion so that he can make more money. And she hooks him up with the basketball team he wants to play for in college. And all she asks, asks for in return is for him to sing with her once. He has no interest in doing so, though he reluctantly agrees. He has no interest in dating her. So essentially, he's just using her to get ahead. <laughs> As the show comes closer, Troy backs out. Sorry, Sharpay, I'm not seeing you with you anymore. She says, fine, I'm just going to turn to my brother. I mean, she was upset, but she's going to turn to her brother anyway. But her brother totally abandoned her, stabbed her in the back, and joined the Wildcats. 
he actually decided to choreograph their talent show routine instead of working with her. So Sharpay's upset, she's crying in her dressing room. Honestly, I don't know how you can't feel bad for her at that point. And Ryan says, you know what, Troy? I don't want my sister to be embarrassed. Sing with her. But really, what Ryan was doing was he tricked Troy into thinking he was singing with Sharpay. He tricked Sharpay into thinking that she was singing with Troy, when really, Troy and Gabriella were gonna sing. <laughs> and Sharpay's left backstage again. All she wanted was to sing at this talent show. That's all she wanted. And somehow they all took over again, and she gets to sit backstage. Did she cry? Yes. Did she yell? No. What did she do? She gave the Star Dazzle Award to her brother, who stabbed her in the back. <laughs> How is she not the bigger person? Don't worry, things get worse in the third movie. <laughs> she decides she wants to take control of her career as a performer. So she hires some nice British assistant named Tiara Gold. Don't worry, we'll get back to her later. She also finds out that she's actually up for a potential scholarship with Juilliard, a huge performing school. And so are three of her classmates, only one of which actually has talent, and that is her brother, Ryan. <laughs> Troy and Kelsey, I do not know why they are in Sydney. <laughs> I'll just have you know that when it comes to Juilliard, according to the US Department of Education, they have a 6% acceptance rate. That is lower than Yale. Why they are considered, I don't know. They don't have as much experience as people like Ryan and Sharpay. I will also have you know that in the movie we find out that Troy never actually submitted an application. Ms. Darvis did so. And according to the Juilliard website, you are required to not only fill out an entire application, but you are to submit two letters of recommendation as well as an entrance essay. So Ms. Darvis did so, pretending to be Troy. <laughs> Not only is that illegal, <laughs> but it's favoritism, and Sharpay deserves better. <laughs> Gabriella decides she wants to take over this show as well because we all hate Sharpay. And she invites all of her friends to join, and they all decide they're gonna do it together, but Gabriella realizes that she is actually more interested in academia than she is in performing. So she ditches the show last minute to go join Stanford for a two week program. I mean, honestly, good for you, but you just left everyone. <laughs> Troy decides he's actually more dedicated to Gabriella than he is to the show, so he bounces also. And Sharpay is left with absolutely no one else to perform. So who does she end up with? Some random freshman named Rocket Man. <laughs> if your name is Rocket Man, you do not deserve to perform with Sharpay Evans. She's humiliated on stage in front of the Juilliard representatives. And once again, she runs backstage upset. What does she find? Her sweet assistant with an accent as tacky as the headpiece that she's named after, who is actually stabbing her in the back just like everyone else does. Why? Well, her plan all along was actually to steal Sharpay's show. We find that out now. Sharpay is devastated. She trusted this girl, and she wants to go take the show from her. But finally, Sharpay stands up for herself and steals the show back. And for just one second, Sharpay gets a spotlight that she deserves. Troy and Gabriella run back in, everyone sees them as a hero, and I should point out that, also included on the Juilliard website, is a requirement to be accepted, and I quote, a serious commitment to an acting career in the professional theater. I repeat, a serious commitment. Troy bounced to go after his girlfriend, I don't think he has a serious commitment. Again, consider it, I, I don't understand why he was considered for this one. At the end of the show, Ms. Darbus announces who receives the scholarship to Julia. To Julia, sorry. Kelsey. She receives the award for writing two bad musicals. <laughs> <laughs> and we're so excited for her. Woohoo! That makes so much sense. Sharpay has been performing her entire life, and she doesn't get it. And Kelsey wrote two bad shows. One had Spanish in it for some reason, and the other one was all about her friends. Really original, Kelsey. But somehow she won. But don't worry, there's another one that we're giving out. They decided to give another scholarship. Not to Sharpay, this time it actually went to her twin brother, Ryan. Now imagine working your entire life for something and seeing it all given to your twin brother. Would you cry? Probably. Would you hit him? Most likely. <laughs> but no, what did Sharpay do? She hugged him and she congratulated him. And while they're standing on stage, Ms. Darvis announces where Sharpay, where Sharpay is going to go. She goes to the University of Albuquerque to pursue a career in performing arts, good luck with that, so that she can help in the East High Drama Department. 
East Side Drama Department? Juilliard. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, Sharpe gets the short end of the stick. If you ask me, it's not fair. If you ask me, she deserves better. If you ask me, she deserves the spotlight. If you ask me, she needs a little fabulous. <laughs> Is that so wrong? <laughs> <laughs>